Hey everyone, welcome to a solo Glad Trad thing. I'm Rodolfo Carlos. And I'm going to be doing a video today answering an interesting question that we got on our YouTube channel. Um, I'll read you the question. It's from Trudy Ann Brown. And she says, Hey guys, I wanted your view on something. Thank you. I have been praying the rosary more lately. I wanted to know why some traditional Catholics don't pray the Luminous Mysteries. Are the Luminous Mysteries binding because it was introduced by the Pope? Uh, the Pope being John Paul II. Uh, and she continues, I have just been I have just been feeling a little guilty because I have not been praying the Luminous, but prayed the other mysteries. God bless. Thank you for your question, um, Trudy Ann. And uh, I'll certainly be happy to answer that question. Uh, but in order to do that, I have to give a sort of uh, an origin story about the rosary. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, uh, maybe it would do well for, for us to refresh our, our memory on how we got the rosary to begin with. And um, I'm going to be giving you the origin story according to St. Louis de Montfort in his book, The Secret of the Rosary. Talked about this book um, last week as a, a really good um, resource to have uh, in, your, in your bookcase. And before I do that, I wanted to show you something. So I'm going to put this down. And I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to show you the book that I have rebound. This is my prayer book. That's the title by Father Lassance. And uh, this is, uh, if you saw my other episode, this one was printed in, I believe, 1908. Yep, 1908, which is awesome. Uh, but it was in bad shape. Uh, my wife got it for me on eBay, and uh, it was falling apart, and she thought it would be an awesome project for me. And she was right. It was a really nice, challenging project. Uh, not so challenging that it was like frustrating, but it was challenging enough to be refreshing and uh, something, something nice to work on. So um, I've rebound it in leather. This is a uh, lambskin leather, and uh, I don't know if you could see it, but there's like a little bit of an impression here. And because the old uh, cover was so worn, I just kind of cut out the title and uh, pasted it on here. I also made these uh, leather ribs here on the back, so it gives it a little bit of a flourish. And uh, I've been using this more often in my daily prayer life, which is really awesome. I, I do suggest you pick this up because there's all kinds of prayers in here that I think would be helpful for a lot of people. Um, so there's my book, prayer book. If you guys are interested in um, picking one of these up, I like to uh, go on eBay and uh, find, and I like to think of it as rescue. I, I like to rescue things on eBay. Uh, that have Catholic significance to them. So if you see these in bad shape, you can usually pick them up for, I don't know, 20 something dollars. If you find them for cheaper, pick them up and I can I can bind them for you, no biggie. Um, and if you wanna buy it new, you could get it at the Fraternity Bookstore, um, which is linked in the previous video that I did on this particular book. Oops, hit my mic there. And uh, I also wanted to show you this little uh, prayer book thing that I have. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So let's go back to uh, telling you about the origin story of the rosary. Uh, there are 50 chapters in this book and um, St. Louis de Montfort, he calls them roses. So every chapter is a rose. And this one comes from the second rose in which he describes the origin story of the rosary. So he says, I'm going to jump ahead here. He says, I will tell you the story of how he received it, meaning the rosary, which is found in the very well-known book, De Dignitate Salteri, by Blessed Alan de la Roche. St. Dominic, seeing that the gravity of people's sins was hindering the conversion of the Al Albigensians, which were heretics, he withdrew into a forest near... Toulouse, 
where he prayed unceasingly for three days and three nights. During this time, he did nothing but weep and do harsh penances in order to appease the anger of Almighty God. He used his discipline so much that his body was lacerated, and finally he fell into a coma. I'm going to pause there, and I just want to add the great love that this saint had for the conversion of sinners. I mean, he loves, he loves people so much, and he wants to lead people to God so badly that he disciplines himself so harshly for three days and three nights. That's incredible. And um, certainly a, uh, a role model for us. And I continue, at this point, Our Lady appeared to him, accompanied by three angels, and she said, Dear Dominic, do you know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Oh, my lady, answered Saint Dominic, you know far better than I do, because next to your son Jesus Christ, you have always been the chief instrument of our salvation. Then Our Lady replied, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to, to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. So he rose, comforted, and burning with zeal for the conversion of the people in that district, he made straight for the cathedral. At once, unseen angels rang the bells to gather the people together, and St. Dominic began to preach. At the very beginning of his sermon, an appalling storm broke out. The earth shook, the sun was darkened, and there was so much thunder and lightning that all were very much afraid. Even greater was their fear when looking at a picture of Our Lady exposed in a prominent place, they saw her raise her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon them if they failed to be converted, to amend their lives, and seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. God wished, by means of these supernatural phenomena, to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and to make it more widely known. At last, at the prayer of St. Dominic, the storm came to an end and he went on preaching. So fervently and compellingly did he explain the importance and value of the Holy Rosary that almost all the people of Toulouse embraced it and renounced their false beliefs. In a very short time, a great improvement was seen in the town. People began leading Christian lives and gave up their former bad habits. So there we have it, the origin story of the rosary uh, from uh, St. Louis de Montfort in the second chapter here. Um, And it was given to us in 1214 by our Blessed Mother. And we have the answer to your question right here in this origin story, where she says that, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach those hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. And... Um, Let's see here, if we jump over to the sixth rose, St. Louis de Montfort says, ever since St. Dominic established the devotion to the Holy Rosary up until the time when Blessed, Blessed Alan de la Roche reestablished it in 1460, it has always been called the Psalter of Jesus and Mary. This is because it has the same number of angelic salutations as there are Psalms in the book of the Psalms of David. Since simple and uneducated people are not able to say the Psalms of David, the rosary is held to be just as fruitful for them as David's Psalter is for others. So there we have it. The reason why most trads uh, don't pray the luminous mysteries, or rather don't include them into their rosaries uh, for the most part, and this is just a really general answer, um, other people may have different reasons, but I think the most common reason is this. It's because of the, the um, glorious, the sorrowful, 
and the, uh, the glorious, sorrowful, and joyful mysteries, when you pray them all together, you have 150 angelic salutations, which is Hail Mary's. And that number 150 is grounded on the foundation of the amount of psalms there are uh, in King David's Psalter. So when John Paul II um, suggested to add five more decades to the rosary, um, people kind of gawked at it and said, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm not really seeing how that fits into the equation here. Because in the origin story, we see that it was built specifically on the Psalms of David. So it would, it would be kind of like, um, for example, adding, it would be like adding 50 more uh, Psalms of David later on um, that maybe weren't written by King David. You know, it would just be like, oh, hey, we're tacking this on. And uh, so a lot of people said, no, I'm not sure that's, that's right. It doesn't really fit. And I happen to uh, be of the same persuasion to think that um, I'm not really sure that they fit in um, as they should. Because, again, if we look at the origin story, there's 150 angelic salutations, and that's built on the amount of psalms that there were. Uh, now, that being said, are we bound to pray the luminous mysteries? Uh, the simple answer is no. And um, we have that answer specifically in the encyclical that John Paul II put out called Rosarium Virginis Maria, where he says, I believe, however, that to bring out fully the Christological depth of the rosary, it would be suitable to make an addition to the traditional pattern. Here he's talking about the luminous mysteries. And he continues, he says, which, while left to the freedom of individuals and communities, could broaden it to include the mysteries of Christ's public ministry between his baptism and his passion. So, there you have it straight from uh, John Paul II's mouth. We're not bound to it, it's more of a suggestion, and he's throwing it in there to sort of spice things up. He's saying, look, I, I think it would help us if we thought about Christ's ministry. Again, I'm not really sure that really fits into the, the origins of the rosary, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't, you shouldn't pray them or just throw them away or whatever. Um, if you don't want to pray them, that's fine. If you're doing it because you want to be malicious and you don't like John Paul II, then I would say that there's something, there's something there that you should look at and sort of examine that in your heart. But you're not bound to it, and you certainly don't. Um, you're not gonna. You're not gonna die uh, if you meditate on the ministry of of our Lord Jesus Christ's um, on our Lord Jesus Christ's ministry. Um, but no, you're not bound to pray them. And um, I just wanted to to share that with you. I thought it was a really good question, and I just want to plug this book again. Secret of the Rosary, St. Louis de Montfort. He's an incredible saint. His writing is beautiful. And um, this book has really helped me. I have it, to be honest with you. I'm about halfway through it. And uh, I haven't finished it. I pick it up every now and then, but I haven't finished it. But just the little amount that I've read has enhanced the way that I pray the Rosary and how I meditate on it. It's enhanced my understanding of what it is, why it's important, and um, and I really suggest you get this book, Secret of the Rosary. Now, our Blessed Mother also, in another visitation at Fatima, told us to pray the Rosary. So that is something that we're bound to do, and um, and I really suggest you guys to pray it every single day, just as our Blessed Mother has asked us to do. Um, we see how, how powerful of a weapon this is. And she tells us this herself. She said, this is the battering ram. This is, this is an incredible weapon. So pray the rosary every day. And while you're praying the rosary, imitate our Blessed Mother, where it said that Mary kept all of these words, pondering them in her heart. So ponder, 
ponder and and chew on these these beautiful mysteries and enhance your prayer life and unite yourself a little bit closer to our blessed Lord Jesus through Mary. Now I wanted to show you this um, this little box. Another part of show and tell. I don't know. I like show and tell. Show and tell is really fun for me. Um, this isn't a rescued item, but it has an interesting history. Um, my wife and I, we were uh, preparing to get married at a different church before we, uh, we went to the traditional Latin Mass. And we got to know this couple. Um, I'm trying to remember their names. We only met them a few times, but they were so kind to us. And they actually brought this back from Mexico for us. Uh, they were our sponsor couple. So they were uh, teaching us and meeting with us and talking about marriage and what, what, what to expect and what that looks like. And they were so generous in bringing this back for us from the Marian Shrine in Guadalupe. But the cool thing about this is that um, it opens up and this is where we keep our rosaries. So every night when we pray, uh, we crack this bad boy open and uh, we have our, our prayer because I'm part of the fraternity the confraternity of St. Peter. I have my confraternity prayer here. So we add that to the end of our rosary. And I'll show you my, my battering ram here. This was also a gift. It's given to me by a, a close friend. She was visiting the Vatican and she picked this one up for me. And it has uh, some Benedict medals on the back. The crucifix made out of wood. Sounds really nice. And um, this is my wife's, also from the Vatican. This was brought back to us, uh, brought back for her uh, by a friend. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to share that with you and show you what that looks like. Maybe get get one of these yourself and uh, put it on your bookshelf. And um, it uh, will be a nice little, little case for your weapon. I, I like this one a lot because... Um, <laughs> um, Maybe you guys have seen this before. I think it's kind of like a comical thing, but there are people who hollow out books and they put a gun in it, and that's where they keep their gun. So that's where they keep their weapon. And for us, we have a hollow book where we keep our our weapons, the rosary. So anyway, I hope that um, that was helpful for you and that uh, you got a little bit out of the, the history of the rosary, but also... I uh, hope it answers your question on why some trats don't pray the uh, the luminous mysteries. Again, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't see how they fit into the equation of things. But uh, that's not to say you shouldn't ever pray them or meditate on them, because again, you're you're meditating on the uh, the ministry of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, and you can never go wrong with meditating on the life of our blessed Lord. So there you go. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, thank you for asking that question. If you guys have other questions, uh, let us know. Um, maybe, maybe there's going to be a question down the road that is going to throw us off and maybe it becomes a whole episode or something like that. But uh, yeah, anyway, we, we value your input and, um, and we thank you so much for, for being a part of this, this YouTube channel. If you thought this video was helpful, share it with your friends. Uh, share it with your family. Maybe they they don't pray the rosary or they don't understand it and they don't get it. Uh, hopefully a little bit of information and history about it helps them to, to pray again and bring them closer to Christ, uh, bring them closer to Holy Mother of the Church. And uh, if you're new, please subscribe to us and hit the bell, the bell on the uh, right top side of the video so that you... Uh, get notifications whenever we go live or create a new video. And thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you and Mary keep you. Bye.